Can you hear me in the back? Louder, louder, right? The challenge always with these NWNA meetings, first of all, I'm Jerry Smith, welcome. And uh, we have such, such a tremendous amount of information for you that our committees have worked on. And I'd just like to, we, normally we just start with the Pledge of Allegiance. We seem to have gotten away from that as a society. We'd like to reinstate that. And if everyone would please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So, so here is our agenda. Um, we do have a new officer, which uh, we'll call Grady up here. He's going to chair uh, Public Works, which is going to be some heavy lifting uh, due to the, uh, the uh, UEP situation facing our area. Um, we do have a lot of updates. I'm going to be very brief. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out from this microphone and turn it over. Uh, I do have a few updates. We have our guest speaker, Scott Dunlop, in the back. He's going to talk about not only, we, you've been hearing a lot about Gulf Gateway, but what, what I really wanted Scott to do, he's, he's the visionary uh, behind the economic engine of North Cape. You look at the North Cape, and they just finished a football stadium for $1.9 billion, and that's your uh, Las Vegas Raiders. So the city of Las Vegas spent $1.9 billion to build that stadium. The same investment will happen right here within about a five-mile radius over the next few years. So uh, about Scott's vision, he's been very quiet. I think forest development has gotten a lot of fanfare. They, they took the limelight. But make no mistake, Scott is a resident. He is a partner in the project. But uh, because he's a resident, he has a very unique and different perspective that we asked them to share. Um, and then we'll go to questions. So, uh, Kat, next slide. Please welcome Brady Parker. Brady. <laughs> so. Good evening. Uh, my first time, so please. Be gentle with me. <laughs> um, first, I want to talk about UEP 3, and as most of you know, that's the majority of the Northwest area here. Uh, if you don't know the exact area, it starts at Bonefish Canal, which is just north of uh, Northwest Third Terrace, I believe. It goes all the way up to Kismet, uh, all the way across to the west till the uh, spreader, and all the way across. <laughs> Every little helps. Every little thing helps. Yeah. And all the way um, east over to. Uh, I forgot. Uh, Burnt Store Drive, Burnt Store Road. Okay, so that's that whole area. Uh, just recently, the council uh, approved a bid for $14 million from McKee and Creed to. Uh, design the UEP system in uh, Area 3. So that contract runs for about five quarters or you know, well into 2025. And that's just for the design. The progress on how this is gonna go is they start with the, the design, they get the design gets approved and everything, and that probably won't happen until mid-2025. At that point, they go out for bids for the contractors. And this is a big area, UEP-3. Uh, they found out in, when they did UEP-1 that they had to break it up into UEP-1 North and UEP-1 uh, South. So I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't happen with UEP-3 also. Anyway, when they finally get the bids to come back, uh, that's when they're going to sit down and look at the number of homes, and the number of parcels that are in that area, and they're going to come up with an assessment uh, for everybody. The assessments eventually will be sent out, and there's a whole program for those, uh, which we can go into at another time, but <clears throat> that's, that's the timing for that. Uh, 
Um, after the assessments come out and the contracts are actually awarded, construction will start probably most likely, you know, most likely down towards the south end of EWP3, down near Bonefish Canal, just because they're connecting into some of the existing uh, UEP stuff there, there. But that, I wouldn't bet on that happening until probably 2027, maybe early 2027. Okay. The other things I wanted to talk about real quickly, uh, sides and sidewalks are planned uh, for 2024 in our area. They're gonna do Embers Parkway from Old Burn Store to Nelson Road on the south side. <coughs> El, Dorado product, uh, El Dorado Boulevard from Embers to Tropicana on the west side. And they're also gonna do Cetus Parkway between uh, Joe Stonis Park and the other park. Serenity. Serenity. Serenity Vista Park, there. Uh, these are all supposed to be completed in 2024. Again, uh, the, the Cetus one is going to be on the south side. Um, the last thing I have is the Sun Trail bike path. Uh, portion from Burnt Store to Nelson is complete. Uh, it's up off Kismet, High, uh, Kismet Road and uh, anticipated in 2020, 2024, it's going to go from uh, Del Prado to 20, Northeast 24th. And then also Nelson to Del Prado is anticipated in 2025. Uh, I don't know if, if anyone's seen the Sun Trail bike trail, but it's basically a very wide uh, sidewalk that allows you know bikes and people to uh, pedestrians and individuals to walk. Okay. That basically <coughs> is that all I have for you. I'm so excited to use the clicker yeah. now, it's not working. Uh, if you want to get to the next slide. So I'm going to give a parks update. Um, it's kind of nice. I've been coming to these and doing these parks updates. Typically, my presentation is pretty short because there hasn't been much going on with the parks in the Northwest. So finally, I get to talk about something. Okay. So uh, started on uh, the 22nd. We actually had the groundbreaking for Crystal Lake Park, which is up off of Calusa Parkway. <coughs> And if you see there, you can, I put a couple pictures up of the groundbreaking. We had the city staff and, and city council and others come out and uh, participate in uh, shoveling some dirt, taking some pictures. Uh, the press was there. It was, it was pretty well, actually well covered, uh, believe it or not, for a groundbreaking of a park. Um, but it's going to be a beautiful park uh, when it's done. The picture there on the bottom corner is from the hilltop lookout that they've built. And if you haven't been up there, the city actually stacked all this dirt up, made this huge hilltop that's going to be part of the park. You go to the top of it, you can look out, that's viewing down towards the lake and towards Cape Coral. The picture to the other side is, um, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, the picture to the, to the left of that is the view of Charlotte Harbor. So when you're at the top of that, you can look all the way out through Charlotte Harbor. So it's gonna be amazing. Uh, sunsets and, and other things you can get up there, maybe take a thunderstorm, watch it blow through. And, I don't know, Elon Musk is launching rockets. You can probably stand up there and get a picture of the rocket. But this is the diagram of what it's gonna look like when it's done. There's gonna be walking trails all around it. There's gonna be a beach, there's gonna be exercise equipment. You can go up there and it's, it's quite large, believe it or not, the lake. The lake's about 40 to 65 feet deep. It's spring fed, so the water is nice and beautiful and clear. You can go diving up there and do all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's gonna be an awesome addition. And it's gonna take about 365 days um, yeah, Cape Coral time might be a little bit longer. Let's get ahead. Festival Park is the next one. It's not quite in the Northwest, but it's close enough for us to count. So, and it's going to be a, a nice park in terms of what they're going to put in there. It's going to have multi fields. It's going to have an amphitheater. If you look there, that's what that kind of triangular shape there. They're going to put an amphitheater in there, and uh, who knows what kind of entertainment they're going to be bringing in. But it's going to be actually quite large. Uh, in, in terms of seating, it's going to be grass seating and, and that sort of thing. So the construction contract was awarded. The groundbreaking is tentative for late March. And then the construction is a little bit longer on this one, which is about 480 days. But 
this is just the phase one. The stuff that's uh, not highlighted is phase two. So there'll be upwards, I believe, they're, they're hoping to get 10 multi-purpose fields in there and some other things. So again, it's gonna be pretty dynamic and, and uh, big. Next one. Where's that located? Oh, yeah, I know somebody was going to ask that. And I forget the name of the road. It starts with a W. Wellington. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty far part of the city. Yeah. It's where the air park is. Yeah, for the air park. Yeah, they're part of the air park. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Uh, Tropicana Park. So the picture to the right, I'm showing you the finished version of Tropicana Park. So that's that. Uh, no, that's it. That's what it's going to be. Um, it's done. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's in the Army Corps of Engineers. Is still we're still working with them. The city's still working with them to get permitting. I think we've all heard about the Army Corps of Engineers. They work on a different timeline. But this is eventually what the uh, it's going to look like, or at least the, the rendering that they have today that it's going to look like. It's off of Tropicana Parkway. It's going to be next to uh, where Scott and, and Golf Way or Golf Gateway are developing. So it's going to be a nice fit in there and, and some great green space. So when they do finally are able to get past the Army Corps, it'll be about a year for this thing to be built. So um, that's that one. Tropicana, uh, Joe Stonis. Go ahead. Sorry, that back one. Keep going. There you go. Uh, Joe Stonis Park, uh, down off of uh, Cetus. They uh, did some improvements. If you haven't, that's it's an amazing park with the walkway. And they have uh, like a shuffleboard, cornhole, picnic grounds, all kinds of stuff. They did have tennis courts. I think it's just pickleball courts now. Uh, but uh, they did some improvements after Ian, and part of that was they improved the playground. They put an awning on there, which I think is really good. We don't want to turn our kids into raisins in the summer, so you know, let's get some shade for them. It gets quite hot here, obviously. So they did this great improvement. And they did a lot of repairs. Ian did some damage down there with the hedge rows and some other things. So they cleaned all that up. We got the walking path all clean and square. So it's a pretty nice park. Next one. Not good. Okay. Serenia Vista, down again off of uh, Calusa. Or, uh, yeah, Cetus, I'm sorry. And they've done some improvements there. I call it the fishing pier. I don't know where you went. It's the old box. But uh, they actually put a new fencing up all around there. They fixed the concrete, and that's quite heavily used, so it's kind of nice. You can cast now over top of the fence and not fall in and get hit by a boat, so that's good. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people fish that. I don't know how you catch I'm not a fishman. I don't know how they catch fish, because I think the fish would just catch on eventually and say, there's too many people here. I'm going to swim by. <laughs> they approved the kayak launch. Uh, they fixed that out. Had a little bit of damage after Ian as well, so they make sure that that is safe now and updated. This. They did some, some network. They also put probably hard to see in my picture, but they put a little walkway down next to it. So you can actually walk down through the sand into the canal if you want. So I guess the people were climbing over rocks, so they thought it'd be just safer to put a, a walkway there. Uh, they, they're removing, and I think they're doing this with all the parks in, in different areas, they're removing the non-native vegetation, so they kind of come in and clean some of that. There's still some work to do in there. And they've done a lot of landscape improvement. They put rocks all along it, and kind of blew it in, and put mulch in, they're really starting to make it look nice. And put the, the Nice pastel bathrooms are working and, and looking good, so that's good. Next. They Other. added bathrooms, by the way. What's that? They added bathrooms to Serena Yeah, the, the four, there's four of them in there, so they do lock them up, I think, at night, so you don't want to get into late nights, have a problem. Uh, late, so I thought I would do two others that I'm sure you're interested in. Uh, Lake Kennedy, which is down off of Pine Island and behind that area, but that's gonna be basically the, the Cape Coral racket area, if you will, and it's farther along than what I thought. It's about 60% complete, 20, 32 pickleball courts. I think you could probably get 64 and still have a line of people waiting. 12 tennis courts, a pro shop, concessions, and an office, and they're hoping to get that completed in uh, 2024, June 2024, so that's, that's right around the corner, that's pretty exciting. The Yacht Club, the design has been submitted. You've probably seen it online. They posted a lot of it. I don't know if they voted on it just yet. The uh, beach and the boathouse are open. So if you want to go down there, the beach, they redid it after Ian. It looks pretty good. Uh, and it's still waiting on Army Corps of Engineers down there for anything that needs to be done in the water. It takes a while. And the contracts were awarded. I think the city just announced they're actually going to start demolition, I believe, in April. Um, so if you are going down there around April, it's probably going to be a little bit 
chaotic if they're going to start demoing stuff and falling stuff away. So, so be careful. Uh, you want to hit this button one more time. But if you do go, I don't know if you see the that's coming out of the uh, the Laco. I highly recommend getting one of those suits if you're going to go down yeah. to the beach and win the water. <laughs> they're on Amazon. You get them overnight. You get all pack them. <laughs> That's, that's my tip for you. I'm looking out for your safety, okay? Because I don't want you to look like that guy. Because if you go swim without that, you come back out of the river. I'm not sure. All right? You might end up looking like that water. It's looking pretty, pretty tough. So. It's not on you. Not on me. No, no. That's my safety tip. I warned you. Thank you. Ed Guides, so uh, I'm going to be presenting for Patricia White. She uh, could make it tonight as the chairperson of the environmental committee. Next slide. Three things we're going to be talking about real quick are those three at the bottom. Clean the cake, March 30th. If you haven't seen it yet, it's on our website. You can sign up on the website. Uh, all the information is here too. Uh, we moved it this year down to meeting at Serena Vista Park. Um, if you meet there at 30, get supplies, we'll have trash bags, and whatever else you need to to go out and pick up as much trash as you can. And then we all meet back there again at the end and we have pizza and a social. So bring your coolers with some waters and stuff like that or, or soft drinks. Uh, so that's uh, Clean the Cave. Next uh, one is the 54th Earth Day. It's April 22nd. And the theme is it's uh, put up there is Planet versus Plastics. So there's a website you can go to to calculate your footprint of plastics if you want to do that. Um, and then uh, it's all about trying to make the planet plastic free. That's, I think we've got a little way past that point, but we could try to come back. Um, and then uh, you could also sign this pledge on the website to try to get rid of the plastic bags at Publix. I think they should be outlawed across everywhere because they don't even want them in your, your recycle bin. So what are you supposed to do with them? So uh, that's if you feel like you want to try to sign up for that, go to the website. And we are now in the discussion of buying actually recyclable or uh, reusable bags to give to our members. So that instead of getting them, you'll come and get some of our bags and then you can reuse them. And we're in the process of deciding what we're buying right now. So we're hoping to have them at the theme the Cape Day for you to pick up. That's our goal at the end of the month. Next one. Uh, media and beautification, we've talked about this a couple times now, and uh, the one that really uh, concerns us is uh, the, the, the one that's gonna go on soonest is between Old Burn Store and Burn Store on Embers. Right now they say they fixed it in stone, the design, and in the next month or two, you should see crews out there putting curving in and adjusting some of the water that they've already put in the mediums, the irrigation. And then soon after that, they should come in and with plants. Uh, if you don't know, uh, flip this next slide. That is the diagram from burnt store to old burnt store. The X's are going to be closed off to increase the size of the mediums. The F means a full service. So you could turn either right on one direction or left. So it's basically a full service turn. Uh, or turn around. Um, the key thing that they're, why they're doing it is you gotta have enough space, and you'll see this on the next slide, to be able to put plants in. If you have too many openings, you can't put any plants in. It's for vision, visual thing for cars and make turns. So, um, next slide. And this is all on the website, on uh, the uh, city website. You can get all this information. The, <clears throat> the theme that the city said they were gonna plant is what they call Xeriscape, which is basically Plants that don't need any water. And they've changed your mind, I think, because we've put a little input in, because nobody really wants to see these plants that just look like, you know, succulents is really what they end up being. So in order to try to make that look better going into the project that's happening on the islands, uh, we've, they've actually now said we've changed it to a tropical theme. But it was gonna be a low to medium density tropical theme. Uh, what that means is just how many plants they put in per area and, and how, how many smaller plants so that you can actually still see cars coming to make turns safely. Uh, they've got the, uh, 
design done and for the, the infrastructure, which is the curbing and all that stuff. And then this next couple of months, they're gonna be working on the actual landscape design with the, uh, the city. And they're gonna go out and ask for input. So we'll, when we see what, what that website looks like, to get the input, we'll post it on ours for you guys to go there and give your input on what you'd like to see there. And this is what the diagram shows out of their, their little textbook for how to do a medium tropical. And if you look, you know, you go color code and you let, look the letters and you've got some tall palms, which will be sparse through there in the middle. They got to put low stuff in the turn areas so that you can see cars coming, so it'll be lower lying stuff so it doesn't obscure your vision. Again, this is on the city website, so if you want to look more detailed, it is all on their website on the, all these uh, plants that they could approve to put in there, and you should look at it if you're going to comment so that you can make a comment on what you would like to see. Do they have a completion date? Do they have what? Completion date. Uh, all I know is in the next couple of months you should see workers there doing curbing because see the city bought a curbing machine now which was in, I don't know, last year or so. So they're able to actually not have to contract it out. They could have the city employees do the curbing. So I'm told in the next couple of months you should see that work start. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you're going to see landscaping until that's well finished and maybe six to eight months later, hopefully. Right. But of course they still got to cut the contract for landscaping. So just like I said, who knows what contracts with the city. Yep. Next slide. That's it. Any questions? Thanks. John Smart, Chairman of the Development Review Committee. Same as the beer. Got it. All right, so development, the future of North uh, West Cape is uh, right around the corner. We have a lot going on in 2024. We have uh, massive investments on the Coral, Cape Coral Grove project and the Gulf Gateway at Seven Islands project. We have a lot of smaller commercial projects coming online now that uh, we needed to have in our area because we lack retail and uh, restaurants, things like that, well, at least retail. Um, and then we have a ton of apartments coming from Burnt Store Road all the way over to Santa Barbara. Oh, okay. okay. So, um, we have uh, a ton of apartments coming from Burnt Store Road over to Santa Barbara, um, along Pine Island Road and about a mile north. And uh, Charlotte County, uh, it's gonna be an explosion of development up in Charlotte County in the southern part in the next few years. Okay, okay so this came from um, the city's uh, economic uh, development team. They briefed the uh, council last week on their quarterly report. And out of all this stuff, they had a couple of interesting things. One, Coral Grove, city showing a $920 million investment in that project. And that's the one on Pine Island Road, between Bubba's and the electrical station. And you see the trailer out there and the sign and everything. So you can see what it's gonna be. It's gonna be a, a kind of like a Central Park area in the middle with apartments around the sides, stores, restaurants, coffee shops, pubs, on the bottom of the apartments. Apartments in the back and um, big box stores on the perimeter of the development. Uh, 70 buildings, 70 buildings in that area, 131 acres. Uh, plenty of commercial, retail, and dining, leasable office space, a hotel with 125 rooms, 1,500 multifamily units, mainly apartments, but um, probably some townhomes, but we'll see as it, as it goes along. And the city show in quarter one of 2024 uh, that they'll start the infrastructure. It's the sewer, the water, um, roads, things like that. Quarter two of 2024, uh, they'll start the multifamily portion, phase one, which will be some apartments. And then quarter three of 2025, they'll be on the town center portion. So that's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, well, quarter one, I guess ends in the end of March, right? So there you go. So it's gonna start pretty soon. Okay, next slide. And then we have Gulf Gateway, okay? Uh, the Seven Islands, 
In 2022, when I went before council, I had a 600 and projection. Yeah, you. Oh, you can't hear me? Okay. That's not on. Oh, it's not on? I don't know. It doesn't oh, sound okay. like it. <laughs> All right. So Gulf Gateway, $650 million project that was an estimate in 2022. I'm sure it's going to go up. You know, everything's gone up since 2022, right? So. Um, a lot of stuff going into that project, so we'll get numbers down the road as they progress, but I don't want to go too much into that because we have the experts here uh, today. So uh, what they do say from the city is the architects are under contract for all the island now structures. Now yeah. 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 Are you Good sure? Job. It could have just been my voice. <laughs> You're magical. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Plus the window. All right. So. Um, Architects are under contract for all uh, island structures. The Army Corps of Engineer application was submitted. That's the permits for seawalls and all the water-oriented uh, things. There's a project manager that is assigned to the developers in the city to get this process running smoothly, get it done quickly. It's still going to take, uh, they estimated 18 to 24 months to get approvals for the, the um, permits for the water. Uh, and the development agreement is being finalized. It'll end up before uh, council in a month or two. Okay. Um, now, Pine Island Road to Burnt Store, uh, uh, Burnt, yeah, Pine Island Road, Burnt Store Road to Santa Barbara. We calculated is about 7,800 apartments and planning and permitting or construction from Burnt Store Road and Santa Barbara along Pine Island Road and about a mile north. In construction, you have the Springs next to uh, McDonald's, the Hadley on the east side of uh, Chiquita, above Pine Island Road, Siesta Lakes, about a half mile behind Coles. Uh, Springs is 308, Hadley's 444, Siesta Lakes 412. You have 96 at Savitas and 195 apartments at the club. Those two are on the west side of Sam's Club. Then you have Atlantica, which will be east of the Springs. Uh, on Pine Island Road, and then Bloomsbury, and of course Coral Grove, and Cape 720 uh, down between Foster's Grill and uh, the landscaping business. So we do have, council's always wanted to get more commercial on the Pine Island Road. They have restrictions on what you can build as far as residential on Pine Island Road. So some of these uh, projects that are in the works, or at least in planning now, may be cut back. So. Um, but we do have some commercial. We have Island Pearl. A lot of people wondered about Island, Island Pearl. They had permits. They would have expired in April. But they asked for new permits. Instead of two buildings, they're doing one 10,000 square foot building on the north side, beginning on the north side of um, the parcel that's on Burnt Store I mean, uh, yeah, Burnt Store Road um, with multiple tenants. Um, we don't know who the tenants are, but we did hear in the past at a council meeting that. Dunkin' Donuts may be there, so we'll see if that holds up. Um, so um, we have the shops at Del Mar, which is going up across from the uh, Boaters Paradise on Pine Island Road. It's four buildings, multiple tenants, upscale retail, pubs, and uh, restaurants. Uh, they also have one uh, down by uh, Mel's Diner. Somewhere in that area, there's a, a, a fence up and some uh, signs and it's called Del Sol, same company, TLD Development. And that's gonna have 10 buildings, some drive-throughs and um, uh, retail and office space, things like that. <clears throat> and then uh, in front of, uh, I think it's Cape Coral Crossing, where you have that real colorful big storage facility in the mall uh, next to a fitness center. Uh, what is it, probably east of Aldi or whatever. And you got the walk-ons, Louisiana, Louisiana Bistro is coming. It's a, it's a restaurant chain out of Louisiana. They're moving into Florida, so they're going to build that. It's going to be in the parking lot. And uh, that'll be nice if you, if you, you know, want something a little different. There you go, Louisiana food. Uh, Goodwill, uh, west of Aldi. And then every multifamily development, every apartment complex that goes up along Pine Island Road, there'll be commercial along Pine Island Road in front of the, uh, the buildings. So you will get you know, maybe a restaurant and a store or a couple of stores or some kind of commercial project in front of those buildings. Now, in Charlotte County, we have 
14 developments in the Burt Store corridor. So uh, a couple weeks ago, um, the NWNA was invited to a, a meeting with the Burnt Store Road Coalition. And that's a group of homeowners up in uh, Charlotte County that <coughs> lives south of Punta Gorda. And they're worried about expansion. They want to make sure that the county and the city plans for development in that area. And they are. Uh, Sam Yaffe. Thank you, Sam. Uh, we went, her and I went to the meeting. And uh, you had city officials from Punta Gorda, the mayor. Um, you had uh, commissioners uh, from Charlotte County and staff. You had uh, Commissioner Kevin Rowane from Lee County and Lee County staff, and a lot of residents. And uh, they're revising the 2005 Burnt Store Area Plan uh, to accommodate all this development. There's 14 developments in planning, design, and construction along Burnt Store Road. It comes up to about 13,000 13, housing units. Now it's going to take you know five to ten years to finish all this, but it's coming, right? So the coalition and all the uh, city and county officials are addressing environmental, transportation, infrastructure, and wildlife issues. We have a lot of animals that live in the uh, state areas there, the wildlife areas, and they're getting run over, and they want to uh, get ready for big <coughs> storms, things like that. So they're taking a hard look at that. Uh, and it's going to impact Cape Coral, as you know, from Van Buren to the county line soon. They'll be widening that road for hurricane evacuation. And that'll connect with the widened road up in Charlotte County. So uh, a lot of that development up there, uh, the way they're looking at it is that, uh, you know, the developments are up there in those areas are 8 to 10 miles either way from shopping, medical, and gas stations. So if you go up to uh, Punta Gorda, you know, you have a Home Depot and a Publix. Uh, and I guess a gas station, but you're going to have a lot of housing developments between that and um, between that and and where these people live. And then a lot of people come down to Cape Coral. A lot of people at uh, Burn Store Marina come to Publix down here. I guess it's easier to drive down here. I don't know, but uh, these people are all going to need places to shop and places to eat and uh, you know get gas, get medical help. Um, so uh, Cape Coral has plans to turn the North Burnt Store Road into a commercial corridor. So that's what's going to happen. And a lot of the people up there are going to end up coming down into Cape Coral to do their shopping, to visit, to eat at the restaurants, to visit our two big um, mega projects, you know, the ones that are going to change the way we look at the, the Northwest. Um, so that's all happening. So. Just so you're aware of that. Oh, next slide. I'm sorry. So this is a look at what's going on. This, this big pink area looks like a heart or a kidney or something. That is uh, Heritage Landing, which is already being built out. And um, these are the 14 developments that are coming. County line down there at the bottom. And uh, so we have to look at that, right? The, the Cape is growing. Our area is, is not what it used to be. We've got... Um, 13,000 housing units up there, and uh, who knows if there's going to be more. Uh, you know, we have these two big developments here for, uh, which are actually destinations for people to come visit. And we have tons of um, growth going along Pine Island Road and apartments. And those apartments, if they can't build on Pine Island Road, a lot of them are going to start looking at land north of Pine Island Road, you know, up near Kismet and Diplomat. In fact, I think I saw one, I think it was Diplomat, maybe Kismet, somewhere up there. You know, like 100 unit apartment. So, uh, in the planning stage, hasn't been approved or anything. So, that kind of stuff is going to happen. We're just going to keep on it. Check out our website. A lot of this stuff um, is on the website with pictures, a lot of the development projects. And um, that's why we send it out. That's why we put it there. Because when you leave here, it might just, you know, vanish. So, in your mind. So, they'll have it there in front of you on a computer. So, so if, you, if you feel the ground rumbling, in 2024, don't panic, it's not an earthquake. It's just bulldozers racing to the Northwest. <laughs> Who can get here first and get it going? So, uh, that's all I have, thank you. John, I think you have a couple of questions.
Well, I think there's going to be a stoplight at Embers and Chiquita. In fact, I know there is. I just well, don't yeah, know when it's going in. It's supposed to go in eventually. And they're looking uh, with the county at widening Pine Island Road. And, you know, they're just doing what they can. I know there's a lot to clean, you know, that hasn't been cleaned up yet from the hurricane, but. Uh, I mean, I don't feel like we should be spending all this money on all these parks. I know about the boat lines, but we're spending all this money on things that are not needed as much as local resources right now, which is a little bad tyrant. Yeah. Well, some of it, you know, they get consultants that come in and they talk about uh, the experts in urban planning and future planning and all that. The city's kind of trying to meet what they're saying. They say, hey, you're going to, you know, we're over 200, we're like 204,000, something like that, and it's going up. And, you know, it won't be long before we're at 400,000. So the city's really got to make up a lot of ground that, you know, nothing really happened until, you know, the last five or six years with infrastructure. So, um, you know, they're just trying to catch up. Well, you know, look at Burns Store Road. They had a, 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 a Pine Island Road District plan from the early 2000s that allowed 3,000 uh, housing units to be built along Pine Island Road. Wow, that's crazy. We got 7,800. We're counting that's just to Santa Barbara. If you go beyond Santa Barbara, probably a quarter of a mile, you'll find another 800 coming. So, um, you know, but they're going to have to limit that. They, now it's 86.15, I think is the limit. So, but that's just something they got to work on. We're just here to tell you what's coming, you know, so you can prepare. If there's something you don't like, you know, let us know or talk to your councilman. Um, we don't like any of it. Oh, well. <laughs> talk, talk to your real estate agent. Thank you, John. Thank you. We get it. It's tough. I get all these questions. Oh my gosh! But um, it's true. We we try to be um, truthful reporters of what's going on. Really get the take on what's going on in the city. And um, again, so we need your help. You know, it's been a little over a year for me. We have a great team, and we're in the we're kind of in the weeds. And then we're in a meeting here and there. And what's happening is that we're being asked to help shape Cape Coral, especially the Northwest Cape. If you go back to the vision plan that really is, has governed the seven islands, uh, there was a big survey done of our membership back in, in 2016, you know, and they, the, the city came to the Northwest back then to create this vision plan of what, what do you want? And it came to be the D1. And all the city is doing with John Smart and I in those meetings right now. We do have a seat at the table, which is great. And all we're trying to do is work with staff who are doing a great job at hearing. It's been, it's been harmony, really. It's been a good process. But now we're being asked to do another survey. So we met with Mike Bilches and we went, and uh, he said, Jerry, uh, do you want to talk about what I want to talk about, or do you want to talk about what you want to talk about? And I said, no, Mike. I, I have some things from the Northwest, and uh, John Bashaw was with me. Hey, John, see him back there. But we, he was waiting, and I think the city was waiting for the first, finally, with our parts that Kevin reported on. And just, you know, just want to clap, because when you look at all of the, all the potential projects, we actually put a shovel in the ground at Crystal Lake, so kudos to uh, everyone. Who made that happen and I think what our city manager is like okay now we can go to people for help we can go to we can go to uh, all the other entities surrounding uh, uh, su surrounding the park land and everything else and, and John and I have been working on as you know signage along the key ditch and now it's go time so he, he and I were uh, appointed with the task of actually dropping the coordinates of each sign so you know how tides have been, so we are we are scrambling to get into the key ditch to mark the coordinates of where the signage 
out to the harbor. So that will be done, and that's something that he and I will be doing very soon. But we've been asked to put together, if you look, if you look at the Seven Islands, and then just for a second, everyone's focused on that, but if you look at the UEP, and you look at what Grady reported on, 13, 14 million dollars to this company for a design of planning for UEP. What are, what are the parkways, Tropicana Parkways, Kiss, all the way up to Kismet, what do they look like? And I think what we're learning is, lessons learned is, you just heard about appropriations and, and bidding for a new sidewalk to go in, but that, that project on Embers, Encetus was already done. So when the contractor left, they left pretty much a barren, you know, a center median with nothing on it. So I think what the lessons learned is why do we have these streets ripped up? What do they want? What do, what do you want them to look like? And we'll portray some of those things. So streetscapes, we talk about bridge enhancements, right? You know, what is, what is Old Burn Store Road look like if there's no bridges? You know, it's just wrapping your head around that. What is Old Burn Store Road look like if every parkway intersecting there is a roundabout? Um, what does the North Spreader Waterway look like if, if we're, we can achieve the access channel, dredge that access channel mechanically and widen it all the way to the bridge? And I think Scott will talk a little bit about that. But these are the topics, so this is the what. So we want to tackle these things and talk about it with our community. There's over 2,000 members, 61% reported in 2016 on what they wanted Seven Islands to look like, you know? And we're coming to you now, but we need to do it orderly and kind of organize. Next slide. <coughs> so I'm with, um, I'm, look, I'm with our council member, Keith Long, and we have a meeting, and, and to tell you the truth, I had nothing for him. You know, I'm, I figured, let me go in there, and let's see where it goes. You know, let, let's, see what, let's see where this goes with everything happening. So what we came up with was like, look, we just met with Mike, he really wants, you know, he wants the pulse of our community here on the whole UEP design. So I said, you know, Keith, we need your help. Can we have a town, you know, can we just have a town hall meeting here? The only problem with that is we can't have it here. I think it's gonna be much bigger attended. So we're gonna plan that. So I have, um, I have his backing. We're gonna get staff and we're gonna hold a town hall. Next slide. So we'll partner with the city, we'll partner with staff and we're gonna to come to these four focus groups. We just heard from a real estate professional. We have Sam here. There's many real estate professionals who are interested in their feedback on what impacts to property values will certain things cause. And it's, it's important information. So we want to survey the entire membership. We also, you know, today, you know, Scott Dunlop will share some of that vision. You know, what, is, what do they see? What does the developer see? And they're used to developing uh, you know, starting from scratch and, and rebuilding, especially around utilities. And then, you know, I really don't know what everyone on leadership is thinking when it comes to all of these points. So we're gonna to put together a strategic plan. We're gonna get it out. I, I'm very confident we can do this by the end of June. And I think we're gonna hold this meeting uh, in, a, in a larger venue, I'll just say it like that. Um, next slide. So, our main event, Scott Dunlop. What, what I asked him to come here for, next slide, is you, you heard the mayor talk about last year, he was talking about how Cape Coral will kind of emerge into maybe the sixth largest city in the state of Florida. Um, we talked to Mike Guy, and he's saying, you know what, we'll probably be built out sometime in 3032, 30, 3035, 30, so what does it look like? What does the end game look like for us? And I think it's so important that we start looking at that now. Someone will take my my place as president, and I think this vision continues on as we start to develop. Um, but what does that look like? And when I met Scott, 
he was pretty clear on what it looks like. So let's welcome him up here, Scott. Thank you, Garth. All right, thank you. How are you doing, folks? Good. Scott Delknap, yeah. It's been, uh, just in case anybody off the bat, he said a long time Cape Coral resident. I really have been. I've been here 30 years. Uh, my wife and I moved here from Southwest Michigan uh, about 30 years ago. had three daughters. They all went to high school right behind here at Mariner High School. Graduated from over there. So we've been here a long time. Um, we've seen some changes already. You know, back when we moved here, Veterans Parkway from Pine Island Road all the way out to Santa Barbara was proposed on two dots on a map. I wasn't even there. Um, about 80,000 people, I think, we moved here. So we've watched the growth. And, and um, I am going to talk to you about Seven Islands and where, how we got involved with that and how we've been involved with it for really for years. But before I get there, Mr. Spark, Smart brought up some uh, aspects about Bird Store Corridor. So let's start with that. I'm with CC Land Development Company. That is my company. I am a land acquisition and entitlement company. That means that I basically acquire real estate, take real estate, sometimes assemble large pieces together, and then take it through the process of entitlements with the government agencies and local agencies and so forth and federal agencies to get the entitlements to be able to do what needs to be done there. Bring in infrastructure, utilities and so forth to get that project to be able to be done there. Um, he's right, there's a lot gonna be coming through the corridor. We're already there. I, I'm the, I'm probably one of, the, I guess, one of the largest landowners up through there. We've got over 600 acres on the corridor that we own that we're developing. I mean, Hudson <coughs> Creek, I know it's got a large parcel up there, one project they're doing, but as far as mass project, uh, we've got over 600 acres we've assembled through there. Um, and I'm gonna start with one of them, it's gonna be important to anybody that lives in that region. Um, with the 14 developments coming in Charlotte County, and already, I, I was actually, I raised my kids up there in the Northwest Cape. Um, off of Old Burnt Store, but the um, the only thing you've got there right now, and I'm sure it's gonna get pretty busy if anything happens, you got the Dollar General store. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be stocking their shelves. Uh, but, but short of that, um, are you all familiar, familiar with uh, Durden Parkway and the RV Resort there and that section there? If you look just north of that, you notice a large undeveloped track there on the north side of Durden Road there. It runs all the way down Burnt Store Road for a pretty good section there, and then it runs west down Durden to the houses that start down there. It's actually, a, we, we own all of that right there. There's about 60 acres that we bought, we rezoned commercial. Um, back when John was still the president of the association here, we met with him prior to ever acquiring that. Um, Jerry's been involved in some of the talks we've had with that. That's already entitled for commercial. So, in fact, we just added the last 12 and a half acres of that piece about two weeks ago. Um, Friday, I meet with the engineers on the site planning for that there. To kind of put in perspective what you're going to see there and is needed there, um, the corner of Pine Island Road and Burnt Store Road, the public center there, you got the McDonald's and you know, kind of the, the auto parts store now, you got Walgreens. That's about a little less than 30 acres is what that complex there is. This is twice that size, it's 60 acres. So, because we need more there. We gotta have some medical, you know, urgent care type stuff, dental stuff, you got a lot more, there's nothing. So we started from scratch. Um, fortunately, the, at the time the RV resort was done, there was utilities brought down from Charlotte County to feed that section of the corridor there for growth. So we don't have to wait the multi-years it would take for the city to get up there with new utilities to be able to develop that. So we're already there. So it's it's really what you know leaps and bounds beyond where you would normally have to start from this time because we already supplied with we got water, sewer, and irrigation there, um, and the land's been amassed and it's already been entitled. So it's going to go move pretty fast. I mean, it took a while to get that plane turned around, but we're there. It's gonna take off. So you guys can all count on that being very fast. And I'll be meeting with Mr. Smart about some ideas about what we want to see up there. Because you know, we're, we're local too. We're, we know what's missing and what's needed, but we'll get some input on that. Obviously the developers, we gotta do what makes money and you know what is feasible there and what will get used and people want to see. But we know there's a lot missing and we're gonna bring it. So just before I get, you know, I want to get you guys on that page out with, with what's going on. And then there's several other parcels we've acquired along the burnt store corridor way before it became popular. 
Um, and you know, we're gonna we're gonna be developing those as well. But the Seven Islands, back when I moved here 30 years ago, um, if any of you are voters, you remember the old D where you were the D and D bait and tap lit and all that. Um, I actually owned that back in 2004. Um, I had acquired that through there. Acquired. Uh, anybody remember the old Oyster House before it was Michelle's? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I bought that. And then um, I ended up selling all that. I permitted it for a new marina there and permitted all that and got it ready. And then a gentleman, it was an industrialist out of Ohio named Ted Tiemann, Tiemann Enterprises. Used to be the largest landowner in Cape Coral. Yeah. Um, he, which was a good thing to be until about 2007. <laughs> <laughs> then it wasn't so good. <laughs> but he, he owned a tremendous amount of property up there. And I seen the paper one day where he had bought the seven hours. And I called my broker and I said, we're gonna get a call in about a week, you're gonna to wanna to buy the marina here. And about a week later, I was sitting down at McDonald's having coffee with him and we proposed the deal and he bought that. Um, he never developed anything. He wasn't a developer. He was a guy with a lot of money, was a land acquisition guy and liked to have land. So um, what happened, obviously the city ended up acquiring all that land through an auction. When the market went bad, he let it all go to the bank and there was an auction for it. And, and um, that's how the city ended up with the Seven Islands and a, large, a lot of other parcels they had. Um, but at that time, I had envisioned, even back then, the Seven Islands and that marina there, kind of having a dry bolt story with racks and stuff along Pine Island Road there where the old D&D paint and tap on stuff was. A new restaurant where Michelle's would have been removed and put up on that little peninsula there and kind of up in the air overlooking the waterways and you know getting out of the no see and up in the air a little bit and <laughs> all that. So, and that's still, uh, Although Michelle's has now sold the business, they still own the land there. And they're still, and, and you know, they still have some ability to do something there. So we've already acquired, anybody know where the old Viking Marine is, which is down past A1 Marine there. There's a section there that you, yeah. we've acquired that as part of the Seven Islands project already. It's under Seven Islands Hold. That was acquired because anybody that uses that waterway coming down through there uh, and you come down through there against the tide or you know, it's, it's tough. Uh, it's tough for us, it's tough for the manatees. It's hard for them to get out of the way or get deep enough to get out of the way. And, and I'm sure a lot of them are showing scars because of it. Uh, don't think the federal agencies and, and the state agencies aren't aware of that as well. You've got the warm water basin up there at Siena Vesta that's got the protective refuge there for them to winter in and kind of rest in. But uh, it's, it's, it's dangerous there for the manatees. It's, it's hard for boating, it's hard for navigation. Uh, back in 2005, I had that work with the county, had that dredge through there to get some depth through that. But at that time, the lift was still in, there was a breach to the lift, and it just all silted back up again just within a matter of short time. Um, as part of the process here of going through the Seven Islands project, we hired our own environmental consultants early on before we ever filed for permits. In fact, before we ever closed the land or bought the land. We had them come in and assess that for us from, a, you know, it matters to me what happens, the impacts, the waterways, the flushing of that, how's the health of that gonna be maintained? And you know, the, the part of the reason we all moved here is the beauty of the islands and the waterways and maintaining that. So I've got kids and grandkids here, like I said, it matters to me. Um, so we came in and we looked at it and, and there's some problems there. And regardless whether Seven Islands was ever developed or not, there's problems. And they would be there and they're gonna be increasingly worse as time goes on and more people move up there. The boating traffic, the amount of, you know, how many of you, have went out to fill your boat up with a gas can, and I'm sure you spilled a little, because there's no way to fuel your boats, and it ends up with the oil stream behind your boat, and, you know. That happens repeatedly up there, because there's no way to get fuel. Well, having fuel facilities there that are maintained and, and monitored, and you know, in this case up there is spilt, or there's a way to clean it, those are all important things that add to the, and then also, you know, how that water flushes down through there, the depth of that water. What we envision, and what we're trying to do at this point in time, is as you come around that, North Spreader, which is fairly wide, 150 feet wide. When you get down that section, the reason that runs so fast through there is because it's restricted. Now you get shallow, you get narrow, and you're pushing the same volume of water over shallower and narrower spots, like, any, like a river. That's where you get your rapids. And there, you know, just, well, that whole section has become worse and worse over time. It gets shallower, it gets worse, it gets faster. So that has to be deepened. We're also envisioning widening that. You know, the city ended up as part of that team and tracks it transaction uh, they did where they bought that to the auction. The old d and bait and tackle that ended up now in the city's hands. They tried to get it annexed to the city or, or to the uh, city at one point in time and that didn't go so well. 
that I don't know people showed up with pitchfork. <laughs> Which I kind of expected. I've dealt with them for years. Uh, we got a lot of retired attorneys out there. Uh, with nothing to talk. Uh, but but uh, the way that worked out, um, you know, we looked at that and we envisioned being able to come in here and, 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 and probably a Cody Velvet working with the city. You know, I'm talking with Mike again this week from the city, city manager widening that down through there so that A1 Marine would be moved back, uh, maybe perhaps relocated, still a boat barn section there because nobody wants to see dry storage on the Seven Islands. It's not, it's, it's going to be an actual marina with you know, wet slips and so forth. So you don't want, like up at Burnt Store Marina, we got the you know, boat racks. You don't want, that's more of an industrial type look. Um, but that needs to be cleaned up, beautified down through. It's kind of old and falling apart, seawalls falling in, things like that through the storm. So we envision cleaning that up, opening that up, dredging that, and, and like I said, we've had all the studies already done. The other thing we found out is, you know, there used to be some seagrass out there when you're coming out of that section. There's none of that left anymore. The siltage and the flow of water that's come through there anymore, it's pretty much eliminated the seagrass, which is bad in itself, but when you've got a refuge there for manatees who have to go to look for seagrass to find food, means they're going farther and farther away to find food. They get cold, you know, they get distressed, and then, you know. So, I'm not the only one that knows that. The government knows that, and the people who protect manatees know that. So, was anybody here back when they stopped giving permits in Cape Coral for boat oh, yeah. What was that about? The manatees. And what do you think I did the property value, you know? <laughs> I, got, I live on the water, I can't use it, you know? <laughs> it's, it's not good. So. We took a very proactive approach to this. We didn't go to the government, I say government, Army Corps of Engineers, our Department of you know, Environmental Protection, and say, hey, what can we do or what should we do? Or how much can we do? We knew the concerns. We studied them, we understood them, and we came to them with some you know, proposals for some solutions. But again, whether Seven Islands was involved or not, there's some solutions to that to help all of us and keep that waterway clean, keep those waters, you know, um, make it a little better, make it more open, safer, all those things. So we are, you know, we're not, you know, I know some developers get the, the bad rap of, you know, come in and break and developers and take the money and go, and you know, and, and I'm sure there's some that earn that. But we're not that group. I mean, I don't typically build vertical. I'm not a construction guy where I build vertical. I partner with people who actually do that. Forest development has been a fantastic partner of mine. Uh, we're co-developers on the Seven Islands. They will, they will be the ones that will actually handle the construction, and facade, you know, how that's all, obviously how it looks and stuff, I have an input on that, but uh, they'll be handling the construction part. My job is to make sure environmentally and from a land standpoint and land use standpoint, what all is gonna go in there, what amenities gonna go in there, those are the things that, you know, I'm the one that proposed, uh, y'all familiar with the Walton Waters or liquid fireworks from here in Cape Coral. Um, you know, Michael Postatic, his family's been here for, from Germany. They're the ones that invented that, and they manufacture it still here in the Cape Coral. We plan on putting one of their displays and within a Seven Islands project, so that people, it's a neat display, it's actually a unique experience. And uh, my family and I used to go to the one out the Shell Factory years ago, take people out there when they had one out there. But it's kind of, you know, it's a liquid fireworks display, we set some music and dinner. And, you know, so we're planning on doing things doing like that. They're really family environments. Uh, the other thing we plan on doing, I have a brother that's a charter captain here. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the waterways. We understand the beauty of the islands because you know the barrier islands we're so fortunate to have right here. Uh, you know, on the east coast, they kind of, you get offshore, you pretty much you got ocean. You know, here you've got islands that you can you know, and there's a lot of history. Here. We plan on doing a lot of you know eco tours, things like that, out of the resort, trips to beaches. You know, things you know, really get people out and let them experience it on a basis that you, they can't right now. Um, and there's a lot of old retired fishing captains out here who got a lot of, some of them are a little salty, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they got tails they can tell. You know. uh, so we, that's kind of the flavor of what we're looking to bring to the project. So it's, it's not all, I, mean, I think I read something recently where somebody put in, well, we don't want another Miami, you know, well, I'm not another Miami. <coughs> and this is not gonna be another Miami. This is not, you know, it doesn't even look like Miami. It's just, it's gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful what we're gonna do. I mean, the streetscapes that Jerry mentioned, uh, that is important. Anybody that's, you know, I don't, well, I'm gonna give you your own example. If you look at West Cape Estate, 
and you see the landscaping they've got there, you know there's something nice there, even if you couldn't see the house just by the landscaping. Landscaping sets the tone for anything. Landscaping, the streetscaping here, monuments, you know, some uh, fountains, things like that along the streets that let you know you've got something neat you're coming up to here. And I mean, well, before you get to the project, you got, you know, whether the main entrance being off, ends up being off Tropicana or Embers or what, we would like to see the Parks Department just turn over Tropicana Park to it. We can do something with that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Which was initially anticipated. <laughs> uh, uh, but that would be something that would add nice as far as an entrance to this and become part of the project. Yeah. We'll see. But but um, we have enough parts. Uh, but but. Um, well, but, but, but. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm not trying to take you that way. <laughs> I'd love your work for you, though. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but so you know, but we are here now. You know, I'm going to get asked probably, or somebody's going to ask about uh, timing on this and so forth. And there's, I mean, I'm not going to tell you it was going to start here, it's going to start there. It's an expensive project. It's really, I mean, his numbers were off quite a bit. It's probably close to a billion dollar project. But the reality is, a project like this, it doesn't run on my timeline. It doesn't run on you know the city timeline. We're co-developing with a statement comes to permitting because these government agencies we got to go through for the permitting and stuff. And and, and you know, Mike's been fantastic working with us, you know, the new city manager, helping us help him understand the process and him working with us about what that process is. And as well as Keith Long has been, been fantastic. Um, we're we're going through the right process, we're doing the right things. When the you know, unfortunately, when you're dealing with like uh, the art for this is an example, Army Corps of Engineers. They don't have a set timeline. They have to give you a response to something you asked for. You know, I mean, it's kind of like, well, when we get to it. You know. um, DEP and some of them got a certain time. They got to turn things around. We, have, you know, we, we even answer their questions, and you may have a delay before you. So, but my guess is, just being through this process before, you're still looking at you know, it's closer to the right, probably 18, 24 months from a permitting standpoint. What you will see is, you know, once that permitting is done, it's going to be pretty amazing how fast this is going to pop up. Because when, from an economic standpoint, it's not just me saying that, but because when you start investing this kind of money, you know, investing money, one thing, but getting it back is kind of important. So when you put in out that kind of money, it takes a real rapid approach there to, at some point, to say, I got to get this done so I can start collecting nickels, you know. Uh, and, it will, and we'll be there. And that's, you know, my guess is, It'll happen in the next, you know, few four or five years. You're going to see a tremendous amount of change. But that doesn't mean that we're not doing some other things in the meantime. Like I said, CC Land Development is involved heavily along that corridor. Uh, we're going to be very involved on the streetscaping part of it. Back when I, Rob Hernandez, which was the previous city manager, back when we had made the bid to, to acquire this amount, one of the things I stipulated him in one of the conversations we had with the council and with him involved was that. You know, part of this money we were paying for the acquisition of this project, the folks in the Northwest, I felt, uh, were entitled to some beautification of the streets up there with some of that money. Because, you know, you guys, that project lies in your backyard. Um, and, and he agreed to that. And there was some money allocated towards that. So some additional street saving could take place up there. Um, and some beautification because it, it makes a difference. You can tell, like I said, the tone of a place before you ever get there based upon the landscape and your thing. So we'll be putting our own, I mean, obviously we're spending a dollar towards that. We're going to put a tremendous amount of money towards that. But, uh, you know, we, we tried to keep within, you guys had that D1 concept plan. And it was a concept plan. And, it, and there was good things about it. There were some things that just weren't, you know, probably, you know, didn't work economically feasible, I guess is a good way to put it. But in a general thesis and you know, height wise and inclusion wise as far as restaurants and you know, people being able to, to share common spaces and stuff, we've kept all those things in line with what was consistent with what the D1 constant plan was and I think we've actually improved on it. Um, but, uh, but we're here for long. We're not here to, you know, we're gonna be here for a while. I'm gonna be here, you know, hope for a long while. But, um, you know, I guess I got grandkids here now so we're busy raising them or you know, part of raising them. <coughs> And, uh, but you know, I'm available if you, and, and Jerry knows I'm very, you know, we're, Jerry kept has done a fantastic job too, as John did before him. Meeting with us periodically to find out what's going on with the census. If they have a concern, if you guys don't think if you voice something to him, they don't come to us, they come to us. 
you got something you raised with him, he writes it down or whatever, or makes a mental note of it, and when we're sitting down, he brings it up with me. I do my best. If I can't answer it, if I can, I'll find the answer to it. Um, or try to. But uh, that's kind of you know, what I got to say about with the project. If, if, is there anybody have any questions so far about what I brought up about that? Or? Yes, ma'am. I have a question. It's not really about the project because mm -hmm. this is all very exciting. Growth is fun shopping opportunities, restaurants, um, beautification <clears throat> is wonderful. And you as a major landowner obviously understand property value. Sure. What I'm not hearing is with all of this growth, with the apartments that are going in, and the vast number of people that will be coming on both corridors, where are we, are we going to put increased police, fire, EMS, schools, hospitals? Is that anywhere in the talks with all the growth? Yeah, it is, with that. Required. As a developer, just kind of give you how development works. You know, when you when you're going through development, part of our response there's a lot of things about it. You know, for example, emergency management. If there's ever hurricane evacuation, how many people can you evacuate? These all traffic studies determine how much you know traffic can you hold. Uh, fire and police. Where's the, you know? Thank goodness they just put a couple of these, you know fire station or new fire station up along Burnt Store Road, and there'll be new you'll see new police you know presence out there. Well, but uh, yeah, those are all part of development. It's really we would be you know have a discussion with the city about that anyway, it's really not our choice. I mean, that's kind of part of what the process is. You're required to do that. And there's minimums that have to be met. I mean, I hope they would go beyond the minimums, but there's minimums that have to be met in any kind of de major development like this. Um, and there's more than I, that there's other projects that are taking place that are going through the same thing. But uh, all that kind of runs, you know, downhill to us. We get that and we have to make sure that those things are, yeah. So, you know, but yeah, the answer is yes. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Any other questions about Yes. I, did, I just have a comment. Ever since there, the talk started about developing those seven islands, my concern was that past water go past D&D and the manatee. And this is the first time I've ever heard anybody address that. And I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. No, it's been, I mean, it's, you know, yeah, I mean, anybody that's set, in fact, it was, I'll tell you a quick story about that. I was sitting there with the, <clears throat> my co-developer. They're, they're, they are, they were not as, as familiar with the area. As I was. We were sitting at Michelle's, and you know, I set up back here and you have dinner outside. And, and I was telling about what needed to be done there. And, um, you know, this happened to me a couple times in my life, but we're sitting there and I'm telling about how the manatees come through there and they got to avoid the boats. And then, and, and, and as I'm explaining it to him, here come two boats that almost, honestly, yeah, they almost collided. Because the one going downstream was going so fast, you can't hardly steer a boat downstream when it's going so fast. Upstream, it's actually a little easier. But going downstream, you just kind of get pushed where you get pushed. And at the same time, you had a family of man and three manatees trying to come through there. I, I mean, I call it a shit show. That's kind of what it was. They, they, <laughs> but he got to see firsthand what I just told him about. It was like on cue, like I'd set the whole thing up, you know. <laughs> but he kind of understood what I meant by that. It happened to me one other time, by the way, but, you know, I was talking to somebody about eagles. And, and this has been some years ago in development. I said, you know, yeah, one of the issues we have to deal with is it was an eagle's nest. Kind of the, not didn't affect us directly, but it was still within the zone, the, the secondary zone. And as I was telling him about it, I told the guy, he said, well, don't you think, you know, they might move? I said, about the time I said that, the eagle dove down right in front of us, chasing an osprey, and, you know, and I said, like, no, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> right here, you know. So that was almost like our cue, too, you know. But uh, any other questions for anybody? Yes, sir. Um, yes. My, my concern about the seven islands all along was the, uh, the potential as you go along over there, with all the development of the new houses and the seven islands and everything else, are you saying that that whole area going out that way is going to essentially be dredged and widened over Dr there? Dredge, we know, yes. Uh, you know, without question, dredging, in fact, we've already done the bay methods on that and so forth. The dredging is going to occur. What we're hopeful for is this. The reason we've acquired already that old Viking Marine, I've already cut a, you know, kind of call it a temporary or a, a uh, preliminary deal with A1 Marine to buy their facility and as well as the the actual ground, not the business, I don't, I'm not in the restaurant business, but the, 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 the ground where Michelle is residing. Now, that's all the way up to there. So that kind of where the where it open, where it kind of spits back open then once you get past it, you know, that, okay. So you there. Right, filled in pretty much. Right, filled in. So that needs to be, you know, that needs to be opened up back there. That opens up, which you've already got wider there. So to widen that back up through there, you can kind of envision it 
everything being carved back from there all the way up through there. And then when you get to where the D and D bait and tackle is, which is again, it's kind of old and antiquated. I mean, I owned that back in, I guess, like 2004. If that was wide there as well, now that spoil island that sits there, that's going to come out no matter what, too. That's, that was should have been removed years ago. So that spoil island come out. You will take out that restriction, deepen that, widen that. Deepening is going to happen no matter what. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm trying. Put it this way. I have plans for it, and I'm giving it my best effort to get that done. I've you know, been working through the process of it. I can't guarantee it'll get widened. It's my preference that it does. There's a, and there's another aspect of that. If you look at that on the highway part of it there, there's actually 150 foot road easement that should have been given back. Boy, it should have been given back to me years ago when I owned it, and, but it's never been really challenged. We're going through that too. The city's dealing with that now. That was never, you know, years ago, they said 150 foot, everything else down through there is 66 feet. That went down, so it took up a large chunk of that. That's why that fence looked so far back, uh, along D D there. That needs to be back to what it should be, 66 feet, which means that if I took out 60 something feet off the waterway and carved that back, but got it back, you're not really losing the ground. It's gonna be expensive, but you surely aren't gonna widen on the other side, it's all mangroves. On this side, you could widen. But widening that, deep in that, and believe me, it would be a whole different boating experience coming through there. So we're, in the, we're already in the middle of that. And we're trying, we'll see, I mean, the city, has some interest in the county of acquiring that property there. I'm gonna to talk to Mike again. Like I said, I'll meet with him soon. Most you have to get that corner really empty. It would make a huge difference. Yeah. Just a, go north in the mangroves? No, no, they won't. No, I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine one doesn't work that good. <laughs> yeah, I think I think um, I think Scott put it to you know look at all this um, expansion on Bird Store Road, and then. But the only we're we're all traveling through that little neck, yeah, yeah. through Mount Lachette, and there's no expansion there, you know, and, and it's left out. So how about the old uh, lot there? They're coming out. The old lift. What the rem the remnants of that? You mean? Yeah. Yeah, that'll get removed. That that's actually just salvage at this point. I mean, it's just an obstacle. Hey, yeah. let's go back and forth for these guys. So we're, we're having coffee. You know, we go to the perfect company <laughs> talking. And, you know, it's going to go back on our whole survey, right? What do you want, right? right. And, you know, and uh, Sam Bauer, Sam Bauer from Forest, I saw him come in from probably a long drive from the East Coast. And I talked to Sam about this too. But the nice thing about this is I think Scott with land development knows what, what successful streetscapes look like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, can give us some real good insight, give us some ideas. And then you have a city manager who's like, you know, what do you want? So, you know, what I was what I was trying to attempt to do is really just, you know, sit down with you, which we have no problem doing, share the vision, and then we'll get input to share with everyone else. These are possibilities. Uh, we certainly have, even if you look at the vision plan for seven hours, there, there are different streetscapes in there that have sidewalks on both sides and they're tree lined and there's no island. Right. So um, what, what I'm trying to communicate is that what's nice is we have a really good working relationship That's where we can just share stuff so we can get it all out as a whole. And then, and then you have, you know, our city managers just, you know, yeah, go get it, go get it, go get it. So that's what's coming. That's what we're going to ask you to do. And with the input here, um, let's face it, everyone that works for a profession or whatever you do or whatever you retired, um, this is what you do. So, it, you know, and even Sam, I talked about this, you know, we have experts that can lay that out. And um, Sam, why don't you just stand up a second. So Sam, Sam Bowers from Forest Development. So he's part of the seven hours. So I had to acknowledge you for making I'll this I'll do it to you, yeah, yeah. But um, I, I, that's all. I mean, I just, I just want to close with that. We, we have a great opportunity to work together. Uh, we, we have such a great working relationship, city staff. And, you know, we've been governed by the D1. But what, as we expand out, what does it look like all the way to Burn Star Road? You know, it'd be nice to have some palm trees in our streets. Uh, you want to sell, you know, a million, two million dollar condos and residences. We want our property values to go up and because of this. And uh, it's the investment we make. So, um, sure. is there anything else in closing? No, I mean, just the only thing I would let Lee in it on is this. The name Golf Gateway Resort Marina comes from the fact that maybe you think about it. You know, anybody that lives on that corridor up there knows that that's 
North Spread of Waterway. That is the gateway of the Gulf of Mexico for all of North Bud State. So that's where that name comes from. It's the gateway of the Gulf, and, and uh, I think that's our, it's, it's, an, it's an amenity and an asset to us. Uh, you know, I think that you know, we're real proud of the fact that the access it has there, um, you know, it's not Pine Island and all that, it's not Sanibel, it's different than Sanibel, but it's got, it's, you know, I still love the little, the little town of Matt say there. I've got property in there too, for our community there. And then you, know, you got Spokilly and St. James City, there's, there's, there's history out there that's different, it's unique. And then you know, on the outer islands, you got, you know, whether it's Boca Grande or you go to East Semper, North Step Fever or any of those, you know, we're fortunate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're damn fortunate. And I know it, and my kids know it, and, you know, they enjoy that. And when they have kids here, come here from out of town to visit, and, you know, they show them, you know, the dolphins on the boats and the manatees and, you know, fishing, and it's, you know, we're blessed. And, you know, and so we, and we, we take a lot of pride in that ourselves, and we're going to protect it. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, I think we'll, uh, We'll leave Sam in the back, we'll leave Scott in the back, and uh, is there any more slides left for us? I think that's it. So uh, while we dismantle the room, uh, your volunteers here from NWNA, please spend some time with Sam Bauer, uh, Scott Dunlap, and uh, you know, take it out to the parking lot or wherever you gotta take it. But uh, um, I'd like to wrap it up and just thank you because it's been, I think these meetings for, for me at least are getting easier and easier. Um, and uh, I think it all comes with just sharing some really good information. But thanks for coming out tonight.